Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome to my Facebook Live that I'm doing every week. My name is Wendy Myers. Uh, we do the Facebook Lives on Tuesday at 5 p.m. Pacific and 8 p.m. Eastern. I'll be here every week to answer all of your questions about detoxification and to give you different lectures on different types of toxicity. Like this week, we're going to be talking about thallium toxicity. We're going to be talking about how thallium toxicity uh, causes chronic fatigue and why it interferes in your mitochondrial functioning and how exactly thallium interferes in mitochondrial functioning. We're also going to be talking about why, uh, uh, learn why thallium is uh, prevalent in those who live in urban areas and how to detect thallium and how to detox thallium. I'll be talking about some supplements that are really, really effective at detoxing thallium. And thallium is, is really important. It's one of those things that a lot of people don't talk about that are maybe experts in detoxification or who are detoxing their clients are not aware of it. And there's like when people are t using uh, analytical research laboratories to do hair testing on people, there isn't any uh, thallium uh, tested on that test. And so a, a lot of practitioners that are using that lab are not aware of thallium or, the, or its existence or how to detox it. And this is a big problem because thallium is a big cause of chronic fatigue today. And that's why it's really important to talk about this. I have an article on my website called Thallium Toxicity, and uh, we're going to discuss it today. So thank you so much for joining me. I'm here every week on Tuesday at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. I want you to ask any question you have about detoxification, any question you have about supplements, about testing, about uh, just anything related to detox protocols, infrared saunas, coffee enemas, whatever you you know or have any burning question you have in your mind, I'm going to answer it for you today on this live broadcast. And if you miss any part of the show today, you can watch it again anytime on our Myers Detox Facebook page or on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wendy Myers. And so let's talk a little bit today about how thallium toxicity causes chronic unrelenting fatigue. So any of you guys that are tired, any of you guys that are maybe be suffering from chronic fatigue syndrome, thallium is always going to be a component uh, to that. Because what thallium does is it poisons an enzyme that transport nutrients into your mitochondria. And your mitochondria are your little cells, powerhouses, they make your body's energy or your ATP. And um, when uh, you don't have the nutrients needed to do that because the enzymes have been poisoned, um, you're going you're going to be tired. You're not going to be able to make the energy your body is capable of making. And so thallium is a big component in causing those types of problems. And so um, let's also talk about you know, why thallium is prevalent in those who live in urban areas. So thallium is primarily emitted into the atmosphere uh, from gasoline. So from car exhaust and smog, uh, thallium is present in all of our petroleum deposits. And so thallium is an issue whereby um, people are breathing it in. It's, you know, emitted into the air from exhaust. And then we all are breathing this in. So that's why a lot of people have fatigue issues because they have a lot of thallium present in their bodies. And so let's talk about some of the other symptoms that are caused by thallium toxicity. So it's pretty long. Um, thallium toxicity uh, can, you know, present itself as abnormal heart rhythms, as abnormal reflexes or vision. People can have abdominal pain. They can have acne. A big prominent symptom is alopecia or hair loss, autoimmune hair loss. People can have uh, bone marrow issues where their immune system is depressed because uh, thallium will deposit in the bones and also deposits in the hair and the skin. People will have brain fog. They can have burning sensations. Uh, they can have you know constipation, um, chronic fatigue, something I already mentioned. They can have degeneration of their heart, liver, and kidney where thallium also stores in the body. People that have dementia, depression, um, they can have uh, fever, they can have gluten sensitivity as a result of this, they can have headaches, high blood pressure, inflammation in the oral area, the lips, gums, and mouth, uh, they can suffer from insomnia, leg pain, loss of appetite, 
uh, malnutrition due to thalliums, interference and absorption of nutrients, definitely a big factor in interfering in gut absorption. People can have muscle aches, weakness and tremors. They can have nausea. They can have knees lines in their nails. So people can have little lines in their nails as a result. They can have numbness, uh, neuropathy. Uh, they can have respiratory issues. Uh, they can have seizures. Um, they can have um, uh, uh, skin issues in the, their feet and in their tibia, the lower extremities. Um, they can have urine discoloration, which is, can be green after exposure. Um, they can have vomiting and nausea. And they can also have damage to the nerves controlling the muscles of the head and the neck. So it's a lot of different symptoms can be the result of thallium toxicity. I found all this in doing research and researching PubMed and all of the, a lot of different studies showing that these are symptoms as a result of thallium toxicity. And um, at first, the toxicity or the thallium enters our body in our gut. Um, we have like the gastrointestinal phase of thallium toxicity where it's in our digestive tract causing a poor absorption of nutrients. Then it'll enter the neurological phase where it deposits in your brain and starts causing problems neurologically. And then the hair phase when people are very, very toxic in thallium, they'll start having hair loss as a result of that. And um, let's talk a little bit about um, some of the supplements that detox thallium. Uh, or let's, uh, let's talk about how you're exposed to thallium. So I mentioned that it's uh, present in um, uh, uh, the gasoline. It's present in the air. We breathe it in. It's also in ant killers. It's used as a pesticide. It can be used in some cardiac scanning. So thallium acid isotopes are used in this procedure. It can be uh, exposure from working in a cement plant. It can be in coal ash because, you know, coal is part of the petroleum deposits. Um, it can be actually in kale and cruciferous vegetables. And this is kind of interesting um, because uh, there's a 2006 study that found that the cruciferous family of vegetables, namely kale, cabbage, cauliflower, and broccoli, uh, are hyper accumulators of thallium. Um, but uh, the issue is that, you know, kale is kind of the queen of the cruciferous vegetable, you know, uh, group. And that kale is, a, you know, more of a hyper accumulator than those other vegetables. And even organically grown kale is shown to have higher levels of thallium than conventionally grown ones. And it's really, they think, because of the sulfur content, the high sulfur content in those vegetables, that that's why it's attracting the thallium. And so here's the problem. That doesn't mean don't eat kale. Um, all of our vegetables and all of our meats and other things that we're eating, the air that we're breathing, um, has contamination in it. It's just, you would just want to be aware of that and do a sensible detox program uh, to get rid of all these toxins that we're accumulating in our diet, in the water, in the air. And so unfortunately, you know, all the vegetables we eat have some level of contamination. But that's just an interesting side note. And then we can also get thallium and lead smelting. So people working in manufacturing manufacturer of electronics uh, and optical lenses, uh, jewels, uh, imitation jewels, semiconductors, uh, green colored fireworks, and uh, low temperature thermometers. Um, people can get exposed with oil drilling because it's in petroleum, uh, production of photoelectric cells, uh, rodenticides, so you know pesticides used for rodents, uh, soil also because anything that's released into the air can then settle into the soils and get into the food supply. And water fluoridated with a fluorosilic acid can contain thallium and zinc smelting. And so those are the, the primary ways that people are exposed to thallium, but it's mainly um, in absorbing, um, you know, breathing in air, breathing in the exhaust. And um, so great. Thank you, everyone, for joining. We have about 50 people on the Facebook Live right now, and I'm going to answer all your questions in just a second. So I want to talk about the places in the body where thallium tends to reside. So these are the places that thallium will accumulate and then will be primarily affected by the thallium toxicity. So bone is primarily where the thallium will accumulate, and that's why it can cause bone marrow and immune system suppression. Um, it can accumulate in the hair. And, and ironically, though, it does accumulate in the hair, but we don't typically see that on a hair mineral analysis. So thallium is one of the items that's tested 
on a Trace Elements International hair mineral analysis. But ironically, um, we don't really see it in the hair. We, we see it indirectly with potassium levels, low potassium levels on a hair mineral analysis. Any, any lab um, will show this. So if you have low potassium levels, which most people do, that is due to thallium toxicity. And so many people, so many practitioners are perplexed as to why people's potassium is always low. I mean, people do have plenty of sources of potassium in their diets. It's not necessarily a deficiency for many people, but thallium blocks potassium channels in the body. So it interferes in potassium's functioning in the cells. And as a result, we see low potassium levels on hair mineral analysis. So that's a classic indicator of thallium toxicity. And that's primarily how it's determined. That's how I determine it. That's how, you know, all the practitioners that are doing my Myers detox protocol with our clients are interpreting that. And um, uh, the other way to detect thallium toxicity or verify that is with a urine stool, a urine test. So doing a DMSA challenge with some biosil. Biosil will help to, you know, increase the amount of thallium that's released into the urine. And so that's also a great way to verify or detect that you have thallium toxicity. And most clients, when you do a urine test, have some level of thallium toxicity. So we also see thallium in the heart. So it accumulates in the heart. It accumulates in the kidneys. It accumulates in the skin. And it also accumulates in the spleen. So it will affect immunity in that way. And so, so how do we detox thallium? So we all know this is a big problem for many people. How do we get it out of our bodies? So this is one of the reasons I developed my mitochondria detox, and I'm going to put a link for that in the show notes. There'll be a link here uh, to be able to uh, go to um, the go to the, the the page where you can learn more about my mitochondria detox. And so one of our moderators will put a link in the show, the comments about where to go to find that. So what that entails is a product called activated silica. And that's something that uh, it's a new supplement that we have at Myers Detox. And you can go to store.myersdetox.com to find that. But there will also be a link in the, the comments. And so this activated silica is a special kind of silica that is designed to grab onto thallium and mobilize it from your tissues. And there's another product in the mitochondria detox supplement kit called Citracleans, and that's a modified citrus pectin that will absorb, also absorb and bind to thallium and remove it from the body. So it's kind of like this one-two punch. It's really, really effective at detoxing thallium and other mitochondrial poisons that reduce your energy production like arsenic, aluminum, tin and cesium. Antimony is another one, but it's not as common, but it also gets the, the thallium that we're talking about today on the Facebook Live. And so that's really the most effective thing that you can do to remove thallium. And that's what I, I give all my clients that are on the Myers Detox protocol. There's other supplements as well um, that work really, really well. Diatomaceous earth is also something that detoxes thallium. Um, DMSA will detox thallium. Um, Prussian Blue, that's another product that will help with detoxing thallium, and, um, and potassium. So simply supplementing with potassium or foods uh, that have potassium will help to push thallium out of your body. But you can't really get more than 5,000 milligrams of potassium a day because you can get toxic with potassium. So most of us get what we need from food. Some people do need to supplement, but probably not the best approach, but it's very, very effective if you do happen to be deficient in potassium. Uh, but the, probably the most effective thing you can do is the mitochondria detox. That's going to have the one-two punch with the silica, the activated silica that's designed specifically to bind to thallium to remove it and the modified citrus pectin, which absorbs it, and then you just urinate it out. So that's a, a great approach. And so I'm going to take any questions that you guys have about thallium. So I'll start here from the beginning. So, so Blaze, again, thank you so much for joining us. You're always one of the first person to join in, and I appreciate your coming in every week and tuning in. And so, Penny, so thoughts on biofilms and removing it to deal with candida, parasites, et cetera. So we have a great product called Lorisedin that we use to blast biofilms. 
so that you can then deal with candida and parasites. Uh, Lorisin is amazing. It's made from coconuts. And so we have that in the store. It's at store.myersdetox.com and uh, L-A-U-R-A-C-I-D-I-N. You can search for that in the store. So that's probably one of the best products to, to bust the biofilms. And we have another amazing product called Catalyst Foundation, which is great at killing candida and other parasites. That's what I personally take to get rid of uh, yeast and candida and parasites and other, uh, other critters in your body. I find that's most effective. And I've actually been taking it for about a month straight and uh, killing a lot, a lot of stuff in your body. Everyone has parasites that they accumulate eating raw food or sushi or whatnot. So good to do on a regular basis. Uh, but also uh, detoxing heavy metals. Um, many is really important to get rid of yeast and, and parasites because with uh, one of the reasons the body allows yeast and candida and parasites to proliferate is because they clean up heavy metals. So the body is very, very smart. It's very, very intelligent. I actually did an interview with Dr. Dietrich Klinghart about this. That's on the Live to 110 podcast. If you guys want to tune into that, just search for Klinghart and that interview will come up if you want to learn more about exactly how heavy metals promote parasites and candida. Um, but essentially, uh, you know, some worms and some parasites can eat five, six times their body weight in mercury and other metals. So it's something that the body very intelligently allows to proliferate to clean up the toxic mess. So when people, as opposed to killing off the parasites, do a heavy metal detox, when the heavy metals load starts to come down, the parasite and candida also comes down because it's no longer needed. And so that's why some people get really frustrated. They do candida cleanse after candida cleanse. They do parasite cleanses. And the, the critters just come back. The candida comes back. The yeast infections come back. And if that's the case, if that's been your experience, then you probably want to you know, embark on heavy metal detox first and get that load down. And then many people find the parasites and candida can take care of themselves. So Margaret, hi, hi there. How are you doing? Uh, DeWitt, thank you so much for joining us from Oregon. And uh, Randy, thanks so much for joining us from Seattle. And please, why don't you guys tell me what your favorite detox supplement is? Uh, I want to hear from you guys about the things that you're experimenting with, the things that you're using that you really, really like. Let me know, just because there's so many amazing products out there on the market. I know you guys are so interested in detoxification. Let me know what you're using that's working really well for you right now. So, so David, is there any way to positively diagnose that you have thallium toxicity? So yes. So I mentioned that um, you know hair metal analysis. You can only look at hair metal analysis indirectly by looking at the potassium levels, looking at the K on a hair metal analysis, and that's an indirect indication that you have thallium toxicity because thallium blocks potassium channels in the body, and it will suppress the potassium on a hair metal analysis. But I found that after people start taking uh, the activated silica for a, an extended period of time, after a, you know a few months, six months, the the potassium on their hair tests start going up, and they're not taking potassium, they're not supplementing with extra potassium. The potassium just starts going up because there's nothing to block it anymore. So, for me, that was what happened. I had potassium of one for four years, and it never went up, and I was exasperated. At, why my potassium always looked terrible in my hair mineral analysis is only when I started taking uh, Biosil, which is the product I used to recommend. Um, now I'm recommending my activated silica for the same purpose. It's only when I started taking those products that my potassium finally started going up. And uh, I was really, really impressed by that. Um, the other way to definitively, definitively, positively diagnose if you have thallium toxicity is with a urine test. So the lab that tests for thallium is a lab that we use. It's called uh, Trace Minerals International. And we have that urine test. It's called a urine metals test in our store, store.myersdetox.com. You can type in urine in the search and then find uh, the urine test so you can test if you have it or not. Um, but if you're breathing air and you've lived in a, in a city at any point in your life, you probably have some level of thallium in your body that needs to come out. So Lauren, hi from Norca. Thank you for joining us. And uh, Nicole, so how do I access the video? So the video here, uh, once we're all done recording, the it'll be a permanent home on the Myers Talks Facebook page. 
for the video. You can also go to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wendy Myers, and we post all the videos usually the next day, so you can see all the Facebook Live videos that I've ever done on the YouTube channel, or you can just scroll through the Myers Detox uh, page to watch the video again if you miss anything. So Joan, so Joan and Cheyenne, thank you for joining us. So Sandra, um, I'm a beauty therapist, and I use a toxic citrus cleaner all day and do nails. So what detox should I do and how often? So I would use my Citra Cleanse, Myers Detox product. Um, that's going to be probably the most effective thing to absorb all different types of chemicals that you're exposed to working in a nail shop. Really, really effective. Uh, Zeolite, so there's a product called Zeobind on the store that's also really effective that you can also try to absorb all the toxins that you're exposed to, all the volatile organic compounds or VOCs that you get exposed to um, at, the, at the nail shop, what you're doing. Um, is that's going to be really, really important uh, to, that's my daughter Winter, that's going to be uh, really helpful. So Citra Cleanse and then Zeobind is what I'd recommend for you. And so, uh, so Jennifer, so hi Wendy, thanks for all you do. I want to send my, my PTS for hair and analysis but live in New York City. Any guidance? So we kind of, this is my daughter Winter here. Winter, say hi. Come here, say hi. <laughs> It's my daughter Winter. She's home from school early today, so she'll probably be joining us for the rest of the the broadcast. Um, but Jennifer, so if you live in New York, uh, New York State, um, what we usually have people do is just um, send the results from New Jersey or whatnot. So we we do tend to get around that um, because you know we want to service people in New York, even though they uh, have made it illegal to do any kind of testing outside of your physician in New York uh, in New York State. It's it's a sad state of affairs. A lot of people can't get the, this is Jezebel, my dog. <laughs> a lot of people can't get the services they want or the testing they need or the functional medical care that they need because a lot of functional medical tests like hair mineral analysis have been made illegal where you can't send in tests. So there's ways around that. You just maybe send it to a family member who then sends it to the lab. So just get a little creative there. Uh, so... So Lisa, thank you. Lisa Herndon, she is one of our mineral power, I'm sorry, one of our uh, Myers Detox Protocol practitioners. So she went through uh, eight months of training to learn all of our detox protocols, and she's happy to help you if you guys want to, you know, start your detox journey with us. And so Elizabeth, so would activated charcoal help? Yes, activated charcoal um, is great. Um, I don't, I haven't found any studies that show that thallium um, is absorbed by charcoal. Um, I just honestly don't know the answer to that question. So I know that with the uh, activated silica that we provide, the Myers Detox activated silica, we know that the research shows that that does detox thallium. So that's the safest bet. Charcoal is indiscriminate. It does absorb a lot of toxins, but I can't definitively say if it does absorb thallium. So, so Peggy, so just a drop of bio cell wipes me out. Even with Oceans Alive and liposomal iodine, et cetera, and a drink, would, uh, would Citrusol um, help, so Citra Cleanse help? Um, I have apple pectin. Would more of that help me with the bio cell? So, um, you know, some people are very sensitive to, the, to silica. Um, the silica can really start mobilizing a lot of toxins for them and make them really tired. I know a lot of you are here because you're tired and you're, but unfortunately when you start a detox program, many times the very symptom you're trying to alleviate can intensify. And so this is, this is an issue on a detox program. So you have to either take just a, a minute amount, maybe do a half a drop of biocell or half a drop of activated silica um, to, and just manage your symptoms or, uh, and take more of the, the Citra Cleanse, modified citrus pectin, you can take you know two, three, even four doses of that per day to absorb everything that you're mobilizing, all the toxins and thallium and other metals that you're mobilizing from tissue storage sites. Take the, the modified citrus pectin or other binder of your choice to absorb all those toxins and that can really help to uh, alleviate the detox symptoms people can have, like fatigue or headaches or other things of that nature. So some people are just really sensitive and you just have to um, manage the symptoms as best you can. We have, um, I'm gonna post a link right now to an article on our site called the um, uh, How to Manage Detox Symptoms and Healing Reactions. 
So if you just search for healing reactions on MyersDetox.com, you'll also find it. We're going to post a link in the comments. A lot of helpful tips there on how to manage detox symptoms and like fatigue. Um, but it's one of those things you either have to work through. Um, so you just kind of have to deal with those symptoms until um, it, it subsides. Um, or you have to stop taking the supplement. If it's too intense, the symptom is too strong, that's a sign you're not ready to do that. You need to do other things like just take the Citra Cleanse, the binder for a little while. That for you could be enough of a detoxification process and just absorb a lot of things for a few months and then start the, the, the uh, activated silica again. And, and just when you're a little bit more ready. So everyone's at different stages in their level of to toxicity and their ability to detox. And you have to listen to your body and work with your body where you're at. And that's why it can be really, really helpful to work one-on-one -on -one with a practitioner trained in detoxification that is an expert in it, that can hold your hand through the whole process like we offer on the Myers Detox Protocol so that you they can help you navigate uh, any different um, issues that you're having with the detox symptoms or with the detox supplements um, while you're on your detox journey. Some people, they, they need a little bit of, of extra help uh, while they're detoxing. <laughs> and so, uh, Peggy, so uh, Brandon, actually, what about using Vitality or Cyto Detox Drops? So those do a little bit different uh, things. So different detox products do different things. So Cyto Detox, um, there's, I don't have any studies that show that that kind of liposomal zeolite does detox thallium. I, I don't know. We don't have any data on that. But we do know that Cyto Detox detoxes mercury and lead and, and other types of metals. So it's great in that respect. But for thallium, I really can't tell you. Uh, the Vitality Drops, um, I'm not familiar with what those are exactly. Uh, but if you could post a link to it, I'm happy to check it out. And it can leave a comment after we're done with the Facebook Live. And so Mary, so I started doing coffee and it was two weeks ago for health reasons. Is it okay to continue doing this for the rest of my life? I was diagnosed with high-grade squamous, squamous intra-epithelial uh, lesions. So yes, you can do coffee enemas for the rest of your life. Uh, they're completely safe. There's a lot of um, you know, misinformation on the internet about coffee enemas and they cause death and all these other kinds of things. Um, it's a bunch of malarkey. You know, coffee enemas are perfectly safe. Um, I recommend that people do them about every other day, every two to three days is a good, um, you know, a good pace. And I did last week's Facebook Live on coffee enemas, so that'd be a great place to start. You get tons of information about coffee enemas and how to do them. There's also information on MyRTTalks.com. There's an article, there's a, pod, a couple articles, there's a podcast about coffee enemas that you can dig into. And so, um, Elizabeth, so would herbal silica work? So no, it won't. Um, there's, for thallium, it has a specific kind of uh, bonding uh, ability. And so the silica that's an activated silica has been modified. So it's attached to a choline molecule. And in doing that, it stabilizes it and it makes it ideally suited to bind onto thallium and lock onto it and detox it from the body. And so natural forms of silica or herbal silica, they don't do the same thing. They will detox other toxins in your body, but they won't get thallium because the bonding capacity or the valence um, doesn't match. So this is something you have to be very, very careful that I want to be very clear about. Different types of silicas do different things in the body. And so uh, there's a lot of different types of silicas on the market that are great for detox, but they all detox different things in the body and in different ways. So Sapphire, I just got some dulcet seaweed from Maine Coast. There's a, there's a California heavy metals warning on it. I called them to see what is in it. There are trace amounts of lead, mercury, and cadmium. Should I avoid this product? So the thing with the California Prop 65 warning is that was created to protect consumers but the issue is that, um, you know, that is going to detect the tiniest, tiniest amount of lead and mercury and other metals and amounts that would never be present typically in, uh, like, if they're in small amounts. Um, these are amounts that are typically non-toxic. So many supplements have a Prop 65 warning, but they don't have toxic levels 
of these uh, these toxic of these heavy metals. So unfortunately, I feel like a lot of products are mislabeled and it misleads consumers. Um, unfortunately, and a lot of supplement companies that have amazing products suffer. Their their sales suffer as a result of this. But the 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 lower limit, the the limit of the heavy metals that are require a Prop 65 heavy metal warning, the levels are so tiny. They just, they would just, there's no way that so many products, um, there's no way that uh, like almost any product is going to have a Prop 65 warning on it. Like my Citra Cleanse product has a Prop 65 warning on it, but there, it's bound to all the, the, the any tiny, tiny little amount in that. There's no way that can be toxic to you. It's just such a tiny amount. You get more in kale uh, and vegetables and in meats and things like that than you would in this product and many other supplements that have the Prop 65 warning. So you have to take that with a grain of salt. And unfortunately, there's no way to verify um, this. Uh, many companies do have testing that show the levels of the toxins and how low they are in their products. Um, but So I can't speak to the dulcet seaweed um, itself, because uh, there's a lot of different types of products out there. I don't know all of them. Um, but the thing with seaweed is it contains something called alginates. So alginates are what in, what's in chia seed, what's in aloe, what's in seaweed. And that's why seaweed is used in a lot of detox products, because the alginates, it absorbs toxins. So seaweed I don't worry so much about, because whatever toxins or metals might be in the seaweed are going to be bound into the alginates and be removed from your body. So they're bound up in the product. They're not going to get into your body because they're bound up in the toxin. So it doesn't matter if a product has a toxin in it. It only matters if it gets into your body and absorbs in your body. So, uh, so that's something to consider um, when buying products or looking at products that have a Prop 65 warning label that's required in California. So Elda, so is Laura Seed and Oki for kids too? Yes, it's to perfectly safe for kids. It's made out of coconut. It's all natural. So it's totally fine. Um, so Susan, so hi, Wendy. So how many times during the day should we take the activated silica and citrus pectin to detox the thallium quickly? So the citrus pectin, um, when uh, if you buy the mitochondria detox, it comes with very detailed instructions. You get a download as soon as you purchase it. You get a, a little booklet with instructions when it's mailed to you. And so for the activated silica, you're going to take that 10 drops once per day. We usually recommend that you maybe start with three or four drops, see how you feel. And you can always titrate up and increase the dose if you feel fine on three or four drops. And the modified citrus pectin, the Citra Cleanse product by Myers Detox, that you take about one scoop or five grams per day. And you can also do, um, you know, two or three doses of that if you need to. So the Citra Cleanse stays in your body for about 12 hours. And so uh, many times people take it in the morning, first thing when they wake up, and about an hour away from food, supplements, and medication. And they'll take it again um, in the evening before they go to bed, again, an hour away from food and supplements. And uh, that's a great way to take the product, the mitochondria detox. So Amy, thanks for joining us. Uh, Amy Nalka, hi, how are you? And so Randy, so you're taking, you like NAC, N-acetylcysteine. That's a great detox product. It helps to make glutathione very, very effective. Glutathione is a master antioxidant in the body that helps to detox us of heavy metals. So Sue, Postmo. So I had a severe reaction to a Glaxo flu vaccine in October 2014 causing severe neurological, immune, respiratory, and adrenal issues. And so within days post-vaccine was, uh, you know, sadly I'm still not fully recovered. Any recommendations as to what I might do to detox aluminum and mercury would be greatly appreciated. Yeah, and so sadly I'm 100% against vaccines. I have a vaccine injured, my, my daughter was vaccine injured when she was 18 months old, uh, or, and I discovered it when she was three years old. and she, um, you know, a lot of people have, you know, severe reactions. The flu vaccine is the number one vaccine. It has the most um, adverse reaction reports. And I, I think it has very high aluminum levels. And many flu vaccines still have mercury in them, especially if they're administered from a drugstore or a hospital, you know, getting that 300 shot vial. And so I definitely recommend people avoiding 
the flu vaccine and all vaccines because some people have these severe debilitating symptoms that ruin their life. And it's, I'll take the flu, you know, you recover from the flu. Um, unfortunately, I think there's more people injured from the flu vaccine. I think it's very, very underreported. And I'm very, very sorry that you're dealing with that. But for the aluminum, the mitochondria detox is the solution that activated silica is one of the most effective products to remove aluminum. And as for mercury, I really like a uh, perfect pressed coriander oil. That's a great product to remove mercury. Um, but there's other supplements that remove mercury as well. Um, so different things to remove mercury. Probably the most effective is um, sodium R lipoic acid. So life extension super lipoic acid is a great product to remove mercury. Um, other ones are glutathione to get rid of mercury. NAC, if you don't tolerate glutathione, NAC is a good alternative, which is N-acetylcysteine. Uh, selenium, really, really important to remove mercury. It's a mineral. And so that, that would be my recommendations. Also, the my citric cleanse, modified citrus pectin, amazing as well to remove mercury. Um, but that's probably the best way to go about getting rid of those toxins um, because mercury and aluminum are neurophilic. They like to get into the nervous system, into the, the brain, into the nerves, and that's where they act. That's why they cause problems. That's why so many people have neurological reactions to vaccines. They have brain swelling, encephalopathy, and other problems, and um, numbness and tingling, and a lot of different pain syndromes from vaccines because the high, high amounts of aluminum and very, some of them mercury as well. So that's why we get those reactions. So to get that aluminum out of you, I would focus on doing the mitochondria detox for a, a period of time until your symptoms begin to subside. And so Charmaine, so what causes cesium toxicity? So for cesium toxicity, um, I'm actually going to do a Facebook Live next week on cesium toxicity. So tune in next week. We'll go into that in depth. Um, but if you want to look right now, you can go on my website on myersdetox.com, type in cesium, and I have an article on cesium, and you can look at all the different sources of cesium toxicity. So Amy, so Amy now, so my son has Lyme, Candida, Parasites, etc. started ETA suppositories for cadmium and thallium, and after the third dose, he broke out with canker sores all over his mouth and lips. So the EDTA might be a little bit too strong for him if that's happening. Um, it might be too much too soon. And so that's a sign that he's not ready to do that. So I would prefer, I would put him on um, my Citra Cleanse, do a modified Citra Spec and do other types of binders first for a period of time kind of clean things up a little bit, clean up his system a little bit, and then you can get him started on a more heavy duty uh, chelator like EDTA when he's ready. So I don't know his age, um, but it's obviously a sign it's too much too soon for him. He needs to try other things before, you know, you need to, to do more mild things before dropping the nuclear bomb. And I typically don't give my clients EDTA for a year until I kind of see how they react to certain things, get them on binders for a while. And then when they are definitely very stabilized, uh, then I'll do the EDTA if it's warranted based on their heavy metals, but just a little bit too heavy for him at this time. So Lena, hello from Seoul. Thank you for joining us. So Jacqueline, I found thallium toxicity after terrifying symptoms while fasting. I lost all of my hair eight months ago and have been searching desperately. I did a 24-hour urine test and have been on a detox program for a month. How long will it take until I might see relief? Thank you, love you, thank you for what you do. So um, with, with thallium toxicity, it depends on how severe it is, but you wanna be looking at about two years of taking the mitochondria detox. And so a lot of people don't wanna hear that, but the, the rea and you'll get improvement in symptoms during that time period, but you're gonna remove the majority of thallium by uh, in a two-year period, you'll remove the majority of it. Probably not all of it because you're you know ingesting it every single day, um, but you'll remove the majority of it. So I can't tell you when you'll have relief of symptoms, but it will be at some point during that two-year period that you'll make, perhaps your hair will start growing back when you have the you know the level of thallium toxicity start to come back to come come down. 
so Brandon, so Wendy, in your earlier statement, you would say heavy metals is the root cause of fatigue, candida, parasites, and histamine issues. Well, and I think for fatigue, it can definitely be one of the big root causes of, of fatigue because there's so many mitochondrial poisons, arsenic, aluminum, tin, thallium, cesium, mercury, lead, um, arsenic, a lot of different metals that cause fatigue for various reasons in the body. Um, I wouldn't say that metals are the main cause of candida and parasites. I think the big causes of those are just lowered immune system functioning and they allow these opportunist, opportunistic infections to flourish where someone with a really healthy immune system has a better capacity to fight those off. As far as histamine issues, I'm not going to say that metals are the root cause, but they certainly contribute to poor immune system functioning. A lot of different metals impact our immune system and its ability to function correctly. And so um, it's a cause, but I don't want to say it's the root cause of histamine issues, so to speak. A lot of different issues, um, a lot of different things can affect our immune system and therefore histamines. Um, so Wanda, hello from Texas. That's my home state. Thanks for joining us. And Jenna, Jenna Moore is my cousin in Texas. Thank you for joining us. And so Vicki, do you support niacin before sauna? Um, I think uh, it's fine. The niacin is fine if you tolerate it. I don't think it's really necessary. And I think it's uh, probably really uncomfortable for many people to do. I think a lot of people will have flushing and reactions to niacin. Uh, it's a B vitamin. Uh, some people just taking a, a small dose of niacin can have a, a bad reaction. So it's certainly something you can do if you tolerate it, but I don't think it's really necessary. Uh, Liz, so I have very high levels of tin. I don't know why. Should I be concerned? And if so, what should I do? So with tin also, uh, my mitochondria detox is specifically designed to get tin. Tin is another mitochondrial poison. So uh, Tin is removed with the activated silica and the citraclins, modified citrus pectin. So that's what I would do. Um, SAM-E, which is you know, a supplement typically recommended for depression and other things um, for methylation issues. Uh, SAM-E is very, very effective at detoxing tin and removing it. So I recommend about 400 milligrams a day of that as well. So sapphire. So here's the testing in the dulce seaweed. Um, so the lead is 0.11 parts per million. So this is pretty low. Yeah, I mean that's I mean that's really really low, and that's like 0 0.11 in a billion uh, of parts per million. I'm sorry. So ppm, it's it's still extremely low. I don't I just don't think that's something that I'd really worry about. Um, but it's, and you're all not going to be consuming a ton of it. I mean, how much dulse of seaweed can you really eat? Um, so you're just it's a very tiny amount. It has alginates in it. They're going to bind to that. That's probably going to prevent it from getting in your body anyways. And you're not going to eat that much of it. So there's so many different factors that that to me say this product is probably totally safe to eat. So Rob, so a chronometer is a good tool to use to find out if you're getting all the right nutrients. I just started using it, and after I put in my meals. It lets me know if I'm deficient in something and then I can supplement like zinc or selenium sometimes. So, you know, I'm not 100% familiar with that exact product. There's a lot of different gadgets on the market right now, including bioenergetic uh, gadgets. One's called a Toby that will uh, measure your nutrient levels um, in your body. And I don't think a, a lot of them are 100% accurate. Um, but it's great to be testing and great to, to be, you know, supplementing. I think most people, there are certain nutrients most people need. Most people are deficient in magnesium. Most people are deficient in selenium. Most people are deficient in uh, zinc and um, need mineral supplementation. Um, so it's it's one of those things that's great to test. But it's, it's, if you're eating a, a, you know, eating a diet with a lot of different vegetables in it, you're taking a supplement uh, like a multivitamin or a great product like Oceans Alive, marine phytoplankton, that's a great way to get all the nutrients that your body requires and just do that on a consistent basis, taking lots and lots of minerals and then you're on the right track. So Christine, just, uh, just tuned in, thallium toxicity is huge for me. Yeah, it's a big issue for a lot of people. It's an issue for me personally as well and I brought my levels down with taking the activated silica and the modified citrus pectin, the citra cleanse. Um, so Abby, have you heard of the Walsh detox program? Yes, I have. So he says that St. John's wort is good for detox as well as rooibos tea, honeybush tea, and CoQ10 
what do you think? So I'm not a big fan of rooibos tea because it's a red tea. It has really high levels of nickel in it. And some teas just have a propensity to absorb certain metals and, and minerals from the soil. And so I found with my clients that are drinking a lot of rooibos tea, they always have really, really high nickel. So I don't really recommend that. I mean, there's lots of products that detox your body. And um, I can't really uh, speak uh, uh, to the effectiveness of those products. They're just something, not something I use. I try to use, there's a lot of products out there to detox your body. I try to use the most effective supplements that I find based in research are the most effective for detoxing certain metals. And I just stick to those products. But there's lots of products out, out on the market to detox you. So for the CoQ10, um, I can't imagine what that would be detoxing exactly, um, but um, I, I'm unfortunately not familiar with that. So Christy, so thallium came from organic kale. So I used to eat tons of it and learn that it bioaccumulates thallium. So I talked about that a little bit earlier. So kale does bioaccumulate it because of the amount of sulfur in it. But there's a lot of vegetables that have toxins in them. There's all the vegetables have a little bit of lead in them, um, animal proteins, uh, bone broth, soups, the the you know all the stuff that we're eating, protein powders. They all have some level of contamination. So we don't want to single out kale uh, specifically. But I don't eat it that often um, because of the thallium in it. I do eat it. I'm not afraid to eat it or anything like that. It really makes more sense to enjoy uh, the foods that you like that are healthy. And, you know, thallium has a lot, I'm sorry, uh, kale has a lot of nutrition in it. Um, but it's just about doing a sensible detox program so that uh, you're able to detox whatever you do happen to ingest in your diet. It's unavoidable today. So we don't want to get too worked up. We want to avoid the most obvious sources of toxins, but we don't want to single any one food out, especially if it's really, really healthy, only if it's super, super high in a uh, particular product. So, so Joan, so I use germanium oil to heal uh, can cancer sores quickly or canker sores. So that's great. Yeah, germanium oil is fantastic. So Michelle, I'm curious about DMSA. I constantly see this word everywhere. I look like I'll be driving um, and like I'll be driving and it's on a license plate. I'll open the book. It's the first word I see. It's crazy. <laughs> So you must be reading a lot about detoxification because DMSA is an amino acid. It's a synthetic sulfur that's great at chelating out uh, certain metals. So it's one of the reasons that a lot of medical doctors use it. It's very, very effective. It's one of the number one substances that remove a lot of different types of metals very effectively from the body. And for many people, what they, what they have compromised detoxability or they're just very toxic, a lot of these metals are very deeply embedded in the tissues. They don't come out on their own. Uh, they, don't, they may not even come out with natural supplements. Everyone's a little bit different in their ability to detox, but for some people, especially if they have life-threatening toxicity, DMSA is required and DSA is warranted. And so everyone's different in that regard. It's definitely not the first thing I would do. Um, you always want to take minerals first as the first step in detoxification. You want to do detox protocols like infrared saunas and coffee enemas. And you want to take natural chelators. Chelators grab onto toxins and, you know, take them out of the body. You want to take binders. When you've been doing all that for quite a while, uh, then maybe at some point you might be ready for DMSA. But DMSA is very, very hard on the kidneys. It has to be administered properly by a medical doctor. Um, you know, there can be a lot of different problems with it. It can damage the kidneys if it's not administered properly. So it's just not, it's again, it's like dropping the nuclear bomb um, when that issue can be solved in other ways. So you want to do the gentler, safer means first before going to that resort. But again, every case is different. In some cases, DMSA is warranted in emergency situations and situations where someone's really, really toxic and they need to bring the metal loan down quick. It's very effective. So, so Jennifer, so how do you advise a PTS wanting to conceive that want detox? So sometimes when people are using um, abbreviations, you know, I don't always know what they stand for. So if you could post your question again without the abbreviations, that'd be awesome. So Cheryl, is there an affordable way to check metals for those who are on a budget? Um, so, 
Yeah, so we're about to um, offer a hair mineral analysis for $99. It's going to be happening in a few months where you can do you can do a hair mineral analysis inexpensively. You, you won't get a consult, practitioner consult to do that. But right now they're available on our store for $150 if you want to do a hair mineral analysis. But in the future, we're going to have a, a, an amazing offer. If you subscribe to our newsletter on MyersDetox.com, you can go to DetoxForEnergy.com and you can subscribe to the, our newsletter and we'll send you an offer to do a hair mineral analysis for $99 when the offer is ready. And um, so that's something we're gonna be doing for people because we want you guys to test. I want you guys to find out what metals you have and be able to do it on a budget. So that'll be available soon. So really organic, thanks for joining us. Some people say that chlorella is great and others like Dr. Sebi say to avoid it. What do you think about it? So I'm not a big fan of chlorella. Um, one of the issues is that uh, I found that it doesn't really move the, the needle on metals tests when we're doing urine tests or other tests. Chl chlorella just doesn't cut the mustard. It doesn't cause metals to release very effectively. Some, for some people, certainly, there's some people that are very se sensitive, or it'll work very well for them. But for the majority of people, chlorella is just not strong enough um, to bind onto metals to remove them from the body. It also depends on the type of chlorella, how the chlorella was, chlorella was produced, how the cell wall was broken. There's a, a, vast, um, a vast array of quality and therefore effectiveness of different chlorellas. I do like BioPure's chlorella. They have two different types of chlorella, two different strains that detox different things, but generally I don't recommend chlorella because it has a lot of organic elements in it, and those elements can be broken down and used for other things besides detox in the body, so it might have components in there to detox you, but the body will break it down and use it for something else So because it's an organic compound. So um, it's one of those things that I, I don't generally recommend to people, but the BioPure, I think, is a very good product to use um, if you're going to use chlorella. So, um, so Lena, so thank, thank you so much for all the information. It's my pleasure. And uh, Michelle, thank you so much for joining us. And so, Jennifer, so how do you advise individuals who are planning on conception but want to detox first? So I recommend um, because we, are as mothers, pass our toxin load onto the child in utero, through the placenta, I recommend that women detox for at least a year before getting pregnant. Ideally, you wanna do our Myers detox protocol where you do a hair mineral analysis, identify the metals you have, and then get a custom supplement protocol to detox the specific metals that we find on the test. But you can also, a very simple thing you can do is our mitochondria detox, which it's very, very effective at removing a lot of different metals and chemicals from the body. And so that's a very inexpensive, cheap way to detox. It's a very simple protocol. And you can also do infrared saunas uh, a few days a week. You can do coffee enemas, um, but the most powerful thing you can do is the Meyer Detox Protocol because you'll be, you'll be getting a lot of different supplements to quickly detox. So if you're trying to conceive, you do want to quickly detox as many things as you can out of your body so they're not passed to the baby. But you can't detox while you're pregnant or while you're breastfeeding. Um, so you want to be just cognizant of that to detox as much as you can prior to getting pregnant. And so that's all the questions that we have so we're ending just on time at about 6 p.m thank you so much for joining me again if you missed any part of this uh, broadcast you can simply watch it again on the, the on the facebook page here on the myrt talks facebook page and it will be available as soon as we're i'm done talking the video will load and it'll be available permanently anytime on our facebook page we're also going to upload it today or tomorrow on my youtube channel youtube.com slash wendy myers and i'll be back here next week on tuesday at 5 p.m pacific 8 p.m eastern i'm here every tuesday to give you guys a lecture and education about detoxification. Next week, you can tune in to learn about cesium toxicity. This is a big concern because of the Fukushima nuclear disaster in Japan that happened four years ago, but the nuclear reactors that were damaged by the tsunami are still releasing cesium 
into our environment every single day at alarming amounts. So tune in to find out how that is affecting your health and how you can detox it. So I'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you again so much for joining me. I love having you guys here every week and educating you guys about detoxification. Talk to you soon.